Have you ever been jealous of someone? Like maybe they had something that you want, a new game or a book or even a friend that you wish was your friend too. Well, today we're gonna find out about a family that had a real problem with jealousy. We're gonna see just how far giving in to jealousy can take you. It's obviously platypi. It's platy people. I can't even. I just can't even with you. I can't oh wait, even. wait, 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 wait. There's something in there I forgot to show you. Mama gave it to me because she said that she loves me. What is that? It's the American currency. It's it's monies. It's monies. Cash. Cash. Cheddar. Cheese. Buckaroonies. Oh yeah. Ah. Isn't it nice? <laughs> um. Hey, this is mine. But, but money. Yeah, but mommy gave it to me because she loves me. But that's not fair. I want money. Yeah, but she gave it I, to me. But I want money. That's not fair. I want money. But it's mine. I want to buy a boat. But it's mine. But I want the money. But I, I my, can't. No, mine. Whoa, whoa. Hey. Mine. 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 Last time on our tour of the history of the universe in the Bible, we talked about Jacob. We learned that Jacob started out as a deceptive young man. He tricked his family and he lied to them. Because of his lies, even though he got what he was after, Jacob had to leave his home. We learned then that after years, it was Jacob's turn to be tricked. I bet being tricked didn't feel very good. No one likes to be lied to or tricked. Jacob learned a lot because he was lied to and tricked. He learned that he needed to obey God and do what God wanted him to do. God blessed Jacob and made him a very wealthy man. He had all the money and all the things he could ever need. God also blessed Jacob with a very big family. Jacob had 12 sons. Today, we're going to talk about Jacob's son number 11, Joseph. Now, you may have heard that name, but he is not the Joseph that was the earthly father to Jesus. But the events in this Joseph's life were sort of like a shadow or an image or like looking in the mirror. And they, they were a reflection of the events of Jesus' life. Let's dive in. Of all his sons, Jacob loved Joseph the most. Joseph's brothers were very jealous about how much their father loved and favored Joseph. When Joseph was 17 years old, Jacob gave him a very fancy, colorful coat. Kind of like a robe or a tunic for us. Now, this just wasn't a nice jacket. This was sort of a coat, the sort of coat that the sons of kings would get. This coat meant that Joseph was special and important to his father, more important than all of his brothers. Shortly after getting such a magnificent gift, Joseph had a dream. This wasn't just any dream. This was a special dream that came straight from God to Joseph. Have you ever had something happen to you that was so exciting and so special you couldn't wait to share it with your family? Well, that is exactly how Joseph felt after his special dream. He dreamed that someday all his brothers would bow before him. That can sound a little bit like Joseph thought he was better than his brothers. After all, he did get the special coat, right? But that is not what the Bible tells us about Joseph. Was it Joseph's fault that his father chose to treat him as more special than his brothers? No, that was Jacob's sin. Even though parents are older 
and wiser than their children, they still make mistakes, and sometimes they make bad choices. Jacob made a bad choice in loving Joseph more than all of his other sons. After all, God had given them all 12 sons. Joseph loved his family very much. God gave Joseph a gift, a special dream, and Joseph marveled at it, and he told his family all about it. But his family weren't as excited about the dream as Joseph was. Joseph's brothers hated him even more after Joseph told them about the dream God had given him. According to the dream, one day all of Joseph's brothers would bow down to him. Do you think his brothers liked hearing about that? No way. They already hated Joseph. They didn't want to hear that one day Joseph would save them and they would bow down to him. One day shortly after that, Jacob sent Joseph out into the fields to see how his brothers were doing. His brothers were there taking care of their father's many animals. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they thought about killing him. That's how much they hated him. The oldest brother stopped that from happening. So instead, the brothers threw Joseph into a pit. When a caravan came by, they sold Joseph as a slave. Do you know what a slave is? A slave is like something a person owns, like property, even though the slave is a person that God made and God loves. The slave is forced to be a servant to whoever owns them. Being a slave is not a good thing. Now, as a slave, Joseph found himself on the way to Egypt. But how could Joseph's brothers explain to Jacob about Joseph being gone? So they killed an animal. They put the animal's blood on Joseph's fancy coat, and they showed that to their father, and they let their father believe that Joseph had been in, attacked and killed by an animal. Their father thought his favorite son was dead. That's horrible. Joseph's brothers really, truly hated him. Jealousy is not a good thing. When you're jealous of someone or of what they have, it often leads to anger and hatred. The Lord Jesus plainly tells us that hating someone is sin. Instead of being mad at Joseph, the brothers should have showed kindness. After all, their brother had walked a long way just to make sure they were okay. They should have been happy that God gave Joseph a special dream. Sometimes it's hard to look at other people and their stuff and not get jealous. Even grown-ups struggle with jealousy. But jealousy can lead you to do a lot of bad things. The Bible says that we should be happy for those people that get things that make them happy. It isn't easy, but it keeps us out of a lot of trouble and it helps us to be friendly to other people. When we feel jealous... We need to pray and ask God to help us be kind and happy for the person we're jealous of. Joseph, who had a big family, now found himself all alone. Having someone on your side makes life a lot easier. Trying to do things alone can be hard. It's nice to have help. Even though Joseph's brothers were cruel to him when they sold him as a slave and then lied to their father, Joseph still had someone with him. Someone who would make sure Joseph was taken care of and doing well. Do you know, know who that someone was? That's right. The Lord was with Joseph. Genesis 39 talks about Joseph being its slave. And it says four times in just that one chapter that the Lord God was with Joseph. Joseph remembered that even though sometimes remembering was difficult like when his own brothers were so cruel to him. Now, something else bad was about to happen to Joseph. Even though at first, it seemed like it might be something good. Because Joseph was a great worker, he was made the boss of all the slaves in Potiphar's house. Potiphar was an important man who worked for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Bible tells us in Genesis 39, verse 4, 
Potiphar was pleased with Joseph and made him his attendant. He put Joseph in charge of his house. He trusted Joseph to take care of everything he owned. God was taking good care of Joseph, even though Joseph was now a slave in a land far away from his home. One day, while Joseph was working, Potiphar's wife wanted Joseph to do something Joseph knew was wrong. Joseph knew that listening to Potiphar's wife wouldn't please the Lord or Potiphar. Potiphar's wife kept bothering Joseph, and eventually he had to run away from her. It's a good idea to do that sometimes. When people are trying to get you to do something wrong, instead of talking or arguing, Sometimes it's best to just leave. When Joseph ran away, Potiphar's wife got very angry at him. How dare the slave run away and not do what she said? She told Potiphar that Joseph was not a good slave. She lied about Joseph and accused him of hurting her. Potiphar listened to his wife and Joseph was thrown in jail. Once again, Joseph had become the favorite. Even though he was a slave, he had been Potiphar's favorite slave. And once again, Joseph finds himself all alone. But even in jail, do you think the Lord was still with Joseph? Yes, the Lord was still with him. While he was in prison, Joseph once again became the favorite of the man in charge of the jail and all of the prisoners. Joseph was given the responsibility to help take care of the other prisoners. One day, while he was helping and doing his job, Joseph met two other prisoners. These men used to work at the palace with Pharaoh the king. One was Pharaoh's baker, and one was Pharaoh's cupbearer. A cupbearer is a man who tested the king's drinks to make sure they weren't poisoned. One night, the two prisoners each had dreams, and both men were very upset by their dreams. They didn't understand them. God gave Joseph a special understanding of what those dreams meant, and Joseph was able to interpret them. That means he could explain to them what the dreams meant. The baker's dream was bad. But the cupbearer's dream was good. Joseph told the cupbearer that he would again work in the palace. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. I have been kind to you and told you the meaning of your dream, Joseph said to the cupbearer. Please remember me when you get back to the palace and talk to Pharaoh the king. I haven't done anything to deserve to be in jail. But guess what? The cupbearer didn't remember. He went back to his happy life at the palace and he forgot all about Joseph. Joseph was still stuck in prison for a few more years. Even though Joseph did what was right, everything now was going wrong in his life. God was with Joseph even in the very best moments of his life and even in the very worst moments, which seemed to be happening all the time. The true story of Joseph's life gets even more exciting. We'll have to see what happens next time when Joseph meets up with his brothers after 13 years. Remember how I said Joseph's life was sort of like an image of what Jesus' life would be like? Just like Joseph, Jesus was loved very much by God his Father. God sent Jesus to his brothers, which is all the people on earth. Jesus came to give us a message that God loves us and God wants to help us get rid of our sin because God wants us to be part of his family and we can't be part of God's family without getting rid of our sin. Just like Joseph, even though he didn't deserve it, Jesus was sold by someone he cared about. Jesus' friend Judas sold him out by leading Jesus' enemies to Jesus so they could arrest him kind of similar to being sold into slavery. Jesus' enemies did arrest him, and people lied about him, just like Potiphar's wife had lied about Joseph. Jesus was treated badly. He was beaten and spit on. The Son of God was spit on by some, very, some of the very people 
he came here to help. Jesus was then murdered by people that were so angry that they had decided to hate him. But because Jesus was the son of God, he could have stopped everyone from hurting him, but he didn't. Do you know why? Because he loves us. Jesus knew he had to die to pay for all of the sins of all of the people that have ever and will ever live. That means my sin and your sin. Jesus died on a cross as a special sacrifice to pay for all the sin. But he didn't stay dead. After three days, Jesus came alive again, proving he was the Son of God. Now death, which God had said was the punishment for sin, could not hold Jesus and had no power over him. Even though one day our bodies will die, we still have souls that can live forever. If we believe that Jesus died for our sins and that he came alive again because he is the Son of God, the Bible says that our souls will never die and they will be in heaven with Jesus forever. Just like death has no power over Jesus, death has no power over people who believe in Jesus and what he did for them. If you agree with God that you are a sinner, even if all you've ever done was maybe to be jealous or maybe tell a lie or maybe disobey your parents, that makes you a sinner. If you agree with God that you're a sinner and you believe that Jesus died for your sins so you can be part of his family and that Jesus didn't stay dead because he is God's son, then all you have to do is pray and tell God that you agree with him and you believe in Jesus. The Bible says that if you pray that prayer to God, you are now part of God's family and he will never leave you just like he never left Joseph.